Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's November 10th, 2023. We got some sun out uh, this morning, really nice. Uh, and uh, I'm over by the uh, Chicago Hardy and uh, brown turkey uh, fig trees. So just thought I'd give you a little bit of an update. I never did tip them. So tipping them is 90 days before you want the fruit just coming along and pinching off the top growth. So we just got too far behind with all the projects that we, we, we put we do. Uh, so there's a lot of figs still on here that did not get ripe. We have plenty, but there's still a whole bunch that, that are not ripe. So what I'm going to do is, uh, in order to put these to bed for the winter, since we're in a very cold temperate climate, uh, here I'll show you here, uh, over here. So in this region, uh, folks typically grow them in pots and bring them inside and, or they go ahead and they uh, and they uh, wrap them in burlap or insulate them in some way. Now these are some fig trees that I've been trialing here. I put these in three years ago and uh, each year they come back but they don't come back as strong so they die everything dies off right at the ground level and the roots are still alive, or at least they have been, and they keep coming back, uh, but not as hardy as they would each year. So we have harsh enough winters that you just can't have them plant. You can't have them planted outside in Zone 5A, where we are, and uh, get fruit off them. Uh, so what we did last year was we went ahead and plant, planted several of our about a dozen of our potted. Uh, fig trees down here in a row on the other side of our uh, living fence line over there and uh, then we put these small tunnels uh, down these uh, these are 10 foot galvanized half inch uh, electric conduit that we bent and I have videos on how to do this and we tied down the original uh, fig trees so maybe we'll see down here so this is one that's it was pop, its roots were here and it was bent over to here same thing all the way down there's another one here and what ends up happening hopefully you can see it down there what ends up happening what we did last year after putting the hoops in here tying a paracord to the top of the hoops and then what we did was we filled this whole void with leaves from our township so there's still some leaves down in there and uh, once the leaves are in there that acts like an insulation and we put a plastic uh, a white plastic tarp over the top of it it was a bit of a hassle last year because it kept getting torn up because of the high winds here but it ended up working out great and we got uh, quite a few figs uh, we could have gotten a heck of a lot more uh, you could see some here these are just not right now we've had snow and rain and it's just loaded thr throughout the whole area here but if we had topped them 90 days before the first frost we'd have we'd have a heck of a lot more ripe fruit but we had enough so i'm pretty happy with that so what i'm going to do today uh, is come through and prune them off just below the level of the hoop here and uh and hopefully we'll get another load of the um, of the leaves from the local cemetery. The town will usually drop them off here for me. And then I'll pack inside of there and then we'll cover it up with another piece of white plastic uh, and all. So just wanted to share what we did, uh, what we're going to do. I'm just going to go through and pr prune off the tops of these now. Uh, I don't know that we'll keep them. Uh, we don't sell that many fig t uh, fig trees, and and uh, and I don't know that people would want the hardwood cuttings. Uh, we we don't do a lot of shipping, that sort of thing. And I'm not sure which are which, whether these are brown turkey or Chicago hardy uh, fig trees. Which are the hardiest ones around? So I'm going to do that, and uh, and then maybe next week we might get some leaves. And we can insulate it and then cover it up, button it up for the winter. Otherwise, we'll have to figure out what we're going to do. But in general, I'd say I'm pretty darn happy 
with how the fig, tr fig trees have done in this uh, environment here in zone 5a and I'm not going to walk over there right now but you can see the uh, the curly willow trees that we built planted along the living fence are doing great the uh, lemon balm around here is doing great as well and the comfrey the Bach 14 comfrey the deer come come through and eat them all the time we got an elderberry down there they eat that all the time oh the only other thing I'll show you is uh, Thea went ahead and healed in a few of our grasses over here uh, when I was uh, shot a video of moving one of the um, the locust trees I came back here and I just made a little bit of a trench here and we took some of our grasses and all you can just bunch them up together put them up against the edge of the of the bank there I'll fill the rest of this in but I may have some more plants to heal in here over the next week, so I'm not filling it in yet. So you can see grass is all in there, and uh, another plant, I can't remember what that one is. So this is our healing in system, and we just pack some loose soil there, and then put some wood chips on top of that, or leaves. So that'll heal them in over the winter. I did heal in all of these uh, thornless blackberry plants here, but as you can see, the deer gobbled them down all the time so I put these in here last season and uh, and this was a stool layer in here and they did great but the deer eat them off right at the tops each each time so I may put something over this to protect it over the winter because as soon as the snow melts they'll eat everything down that they can get to so and our we're healing in with wood chips over here some of our bare root uh, black currant plants. This is an elderberry one here, but these are all bare root uh, black currant plants. These are really big ones. These are good three foot tall, several year old uh, black currant plants. So that's a little bit of an update. We've got to get to work on these fig trees. And then I got to decide what else I'm going to do today since it seems like it's going to be an A OK day today. Okay, so I was able to prune the uh, fig trees, and uh, so I think these are pretty good, pretty much that. I didn't really focus too much on, ideally you prune just above this, uh, this leaf here where this uh, node is, and that's where, where, but I figured some of this stuff is going to die back at the very tops of them. So you can see just how I got them pruned back. This is the one that's been here for two years. So this has really grown out well. And some of it I'll, I'll end up tucking it down as, the, as we put the cover on it with the leaves. But I, I suspect that some we'll, we will get some die back, but hopefully we will get the leaves. And I try to pull off all of the figs, but I see I missed a couple here. They can break down over there on the side. And I pruned the trees, so there's a, uh, a black locust there, elderberry plant here, curly willow here, another elderberry there which is growing right up into here some uh, prune that black locust there and the oak and maple down there so when we get the leaves we'll be pretty set and uh, we'll just fill this right up to the top and then get our plastic white plastic uh, over the top of it to try and protect it for winter hopefully we'll get our leaves as well so we're real happy with how well the fig, fig trees did out here in this cold tempered climate this summer how much growth there was and how many figs were produced even though we didn't t tip them you know uh, top the tip tip of them to uh, tell it no longer vegetative growth let's start making the fruit and the wind is kicking up now so uh, thanks so much for watching and have a super safe day. Take care now. Bye-bye.